during the time of Jesus think of him? What did most people who met Jesus face to face think about him? Did they leave his presence with a sense of awe that left them speechless? Or did they have more questions to ask this man that was wisdom personified? Whatever their perception was, it is always illuminating when we study Jesus through the eyes of credible witnesses. Some of these things people remembered about Jesus was, the multitudes kept following him. The message of the Lord was so different, captivating and refreshing, that they couldn't help but follow him around and sit at his feet. Those meetings were incredibly life-changing to the people because many were healed and delivered from demons and various miracles characterized his ministry. Naturally, multitudes flocked to him to have a taste of his marvelous works. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 to 25. They said no man ever spoke like him. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto him, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. John chapter 7 verses 31 and 32 and 45 to 46. The wisdom that flowed from Jesus' lips amazed them, and none could counter his words. Eventually, his uniqueness caused lots of envy that led to his crucifixion. It is important to note that while some came to experience his power, others came to seek wisdom through deep questions. They had a sincere desire to gain knowledge on the issues before them. Nicodemus was a highly placed member of the ruling council of Sanhedrin, a sect of the Pharisees. His position did not allow him to identify openly with the teachings of the Lord Jesus. However, he was convinced that these teachings were from the Lord because of the impact it generated. At a point, he knew he needed to see Jesus, so he decided to visit the Lord at night and ask questions. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. 
If I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? John chapter 3 verses 1 to 8 and 10 to 12. From his simple question, question an understanding of our salvation from sin. Jesus took the simple question Nicodemus asked and used it to explain the excellent encounter that translates a man from the kingdom of darkness into that of God's marvelous light. Questions brought to him sincerely provided an opportunity for deep understanding, not just for the person asking, but for everyone. Another person came with questions about eternity. Let's see how the Lord answered him. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, This do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him, and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that shewed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Luke chapter 10 verses 25 to 37 In the end, he understood and acknowledged the correct answer to his question. The next question was from a man who equally wanted to know what he could do to have eternal life. He was sincere, but the answers he got were beyond his expectations. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 19 verses 16 to 24. This man was a deeply devoted man who kept the letters of the law to the best of his ability. However, the idol he had made of his possessions had closed his heart towards God. 
He also sensed that despite all his devotion, he still hadn't gotten it right because something tangible was missing. This is why he asked Jesus to explain what authentic living meant. But the answer Jesus gave him caused him to go away sorrowful. This shows that sometimes we may know why our relationship with the Lord is cold, but we are unwilling to face it. We conclude with this question from the Pharisees, who had come to tempt him in their usual manner. Others like the chief priests, the Pharisees and Sadducees, came with deeply ulterior motives to find fault in him or to embarrass him. They wanted to hold on to their traditional beliefs and scorn the good news of grace and faith that Jesus was preaching. All these was born out of envy because they had been stripped of their authority as all the people followed Jesus. All they wanted was for him to answer what will contradict the law of Moses so they could have something to accuse him of. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. And the people resort unto him again, and as he was wont, he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together let no man put asunder. Mark chapter 10 verses 1 to 9 But Jesus was miles ahead of them. He had already made a plain that he came to fulfill the law. What does all these mean for us today? It means, no matter what we may come up against, the ears of the Lord are ever ready to hear and answer our genuine questions. This is who Jesus is. He doesn't want us living in confusion, unable to make significant progress because we are pressed with the burden of unanswered questions. Jesus is still the answer for the world today.